On this mission, we will learn how to perform a visual landing at an airbase, flying the Saab 37 Vigan. Choose between a heavy, or a light aircraft. Select an overhead pass, or a direct approach to the airbase. The direct approach can employ a normal, or a short approach. Optionally, you can practice the aircraft shutdown procedure. As a way of rating the final landing, a script by Tautengliss establishes the landing distance achieved, the shorter the better. This mission is based on the procedures described on the DCS AJS 37 Flight Manual version 2.1. This training series is set on the Nevada map, and the approximate mission time is 20 to 25 minutes. By default, the pilot's body is shown, you can use left shift plus P to hide it if you prefer. When a voiceover tells you to interact with a cockpit element, wait until the voiceover has finished, before performing the interaction. If you are repeating the mission, note that most voiceovers can be skipped just by pressing the spacebar. Press spacebar to begin. You have selected a lightly loaded Vigan, where the main ordnance has been delivered and most of the fuel consumed. Your current weight is around 12.5 tons, which allows the use of the 15.5 degrees angle of attack option of the autothrottle system, AFK. Press, spacebar, to continue with the training. We have kept the mission paused, in order to have time to explain the diverse landing approaches available to the Vigan pilot. In essence, you can choose between two options, a direct approach, or an overhead pass approach. A direct approach is one that flies towards the extended runway centerline, without overflying the airbase. Normally, this kind of approach is done via a special landing waypoint, LB, at 20 kilometers from the runway. Alternatively, it can also be done via a so-called short approach, where the aircraft lines up on the runway closer to the touchdown point, at the landing waypoint LF, at 10 kilometers. During an overhead pass, the pilot overflies the runway in mode nav, before switching to mode landing nav, which then will guide him towards the extended runway centerline. An overhead pass can also be performed via the landing waypoint LB, at 20 km, or via a short approach to LF, at 10 km. Press, spacebar, to continue. Basically, you need three things to perform a successful visual landing at an airbase. Of course, number one is having onto the Vigan computer an L1, and or, L2 waypoint for a destination airbase. You can add such a waypoint while in the cockpit, but for this training we already have a L1 waypoint on outflight plan, the Tonopah Test Range Airbase. 2. A runway heading, which defines the direction we will use to perform the approach. We need to contact ATC in order to know which runway has been assigned to us. 3. The QFE value for the landing airbase, as it will impact the altimeter readings when over 600 meters AGL. You can find the QFE value on the first page of the kneeboard. Press, spacebar, to continue. We will contact Tonopah's air traffic controller, to report we are inbound, but first we need to tune its frequency preset. For Tonopah test range it is preset 17, as shown on the kneeboard, turn the highlighted knob until its nearby display reads 17. Note that every sixth knob position, the displays reads all M, which just means that the channel selector buttons corresponds to the G, F, and E channels of the FR24 radio. Good, now press the key or button that you have binded to the FR22 push to talk. The DCS communications menu should appear. Select F5, ATC. F1, Tonopah test range. F1, inbound. Press spacebar once ATC answers. ATC will respond, telling you what heading and distance you should fly to reach its landing point, the current QFE at the airbase, and the runway assigned. It should be runway 14, take note of this information. Press F12 to clear the menu, and then spacebar to continue the training. The approach towards an airbase begins when a landing waypoint, either L1 or L2, becomes the next active waypoint when in master mode nav, prior to starting the approach, we will make sure that our landing airbase is properly set up on our aircraft's computer. First, make sure you are in master mode nav, and the radar is active and on mode A1, PPI, for plan position indicator. Second, confirm that the computer data selector is at ACPOS. Third, 
Press L now to select the landing waypoint L1, which is the primary landing airbase. The destination indicator should display L1, and on the radar screen the waypoint circle now has a line segment over it. This segment represents the extended runway center line and its length corresponds to 20 kilometers. Press spacebar to continue. We need to set the direction from which to approach the runway. First, set the data selector knob to Bonagrands to check which runway heading the computer will use. The computer display shows that it is using a heading of 337 degrees, which is the wrong end of the runway. Press L Mal again to have the computer select the reciprocal heading. Good, the display now shows the computer will use a 157 degrees heading, which corresponds to the runway 14. Note that the destination indicator has a flashing L, this is normal and is to remind the pilot that it is using the alternate runway heading. Return the data selector knob to ACPOS to continue the training. Open the kneeboard by pressing right shift plus K to check which is the QFE at the destination airbase. Good, you can see the QFE at Tonopah test range is 823. Next, set both barometric altimeters to that QFE value. Close the kneeboard by pressing right shift plus K again. Press spacebar once both altimeters are set. Set the HUD to its landing position, down. Set the Slav SI switch to TIL, on, this will activate a decluttered HUD mode, once your altitude is below 100 meters AGL. Set the altitude source selector, HUD CISI, to RHM. This will ensure the radar altimeter is used as the primary altitude source, as it has a more accurate altitude reading below 600 meters. You have now the aircraft ready for a landing approach, and we have unpaused the simulation. It is time to choose which type of approach you want to practice. Press spacebar to continue. The master warning alarm has gone off, to warn you that the low fuel alarm has activated because the fuel remaining is less than 24%, and the BRA24 warning light has illuminated. You selected to train using a direct landing approach. Currently, you are flying straight towards the L1 destination airbase, which is still 45 kilometers away, as shown on the distance indicator. Normally you would wait until 30 kilometers, but in order to have more time for the training explanations, select Master Mode Land Ning Nav now, to initiate a direct approach. The destination indicator will now show LB1 as our next waypoint, this is the point where our flight path will tangentially touch the turn circle, where you will turn towards the runway extended center line. At this point, you can select amongst two variants of this approach. Press spacebar to train using a normal approach, through waypoint LB1. Press backspace to employ a short approach, directly to waypoint LF1. You have chosen to do a short direct approach, this is selected by turning the master mode to land Ning PO, and immediately switching back to land Ning Nav, an operation nicknamed Flip Flop by the pilots. Do this switching now. Note that the waypoint circle on the radar has moved, this is because now it is pointing to the LF1 waypoint, at 10 kilometers of the runway, instead of LB1 which was at 20. Unfortunately, a bug on the Vigan module causes the destination indicator to still show LB1 rather than LF1, but the radar, ADI needles, and HUD, are in fact pointing to the correct LF1 point. Turn the aircraft to head towards LF1, but please note that the yellow cue on the radar ring still points toward the L1 destination, it does not point to LF1. To head towards LF1 use either the HUD navigation cues, or the yellow vertical needle of the ADI. Reduce airspeed to 550 km per hour during the approach. This can be done by moving the throttle manually or by engaging the auto throttle lever, AFK. On the HUD, the fin of the flight path marker denotes if you are on speed. When at 550 km per hour, the fin will just touch the FPM circle. It will rise if you are too fast, or drop into the circle if too slow. 
descent to 500 meters AGL for the approach, as this will allow the TURNAV system to fix any drift that we may have accumulated on our navigation system. On the ADI, the yellow horizontal line is your cue to correct altitude, when at 500 meters the needle will be vertically centered. The airbase should be visible, on your 1 o'clock, apply a bit of zoom if needed, but maintain the current heading. The destination indicator has changed to LF1 and the waypoint symbol on the radar is now showing the extended runway center line. Keep maintaining the present heading until you see that you are almost intersecting that line. Arm the thrust reverser by pulling the handle. The green light above it should illuminate. Lower the landing gear by moving its handle down or by pressing G. Three green lights should illuminate on the left warning panel, indicating gear down. Extending the gear will automatically lower the flaps on the four planes. Keep an eye on the FPM and its fin, do not let the airspeed drop too much. Switch the lights to their landing position, full forward. If contacted by Tonopa's ATC, press the PTT and answer with, F1, request landing. You are almost intersecting the extended center line, turn the aircraft to the right to intercept and align with the runway. Begin a descent, using as cue the horizontal yellow needle of the ADI. Springfield, 1-1, one, one. request landing. Once within 10 kilometers of the runway, the HUD will automatically enter its landing mode, with the symbology dropping 3 degrees below the horizon, to help the pilot follow the glide slope. At this point, change the master mode to land Ning Pio to have a more decluttered HUD. Do it now. We have paused the mission for a bit, to explain the events that will lead to the touchdown. Do not fly below an airspeed corresponding to a 12 degrees angle of attack, and never allow the airspeed to go below 260 km per hour before touchdown. Align the dot of the glide path line with the flight path marker and with the desired touchdown point. Keep the FPM slightly above the glide line to ensure a soft touchdown under 3 meters per second. For a better view of the runway when at higher angles of attack, raise the seat by right-clicking the highlighted switch. At 15 meters above ground, the HUD will change to its descent rate mode, the previous glide slope line, now represents the maximum vertical velocity for touchdown. Do not let the FPM fall under the line. Press spacebar to continue. On touchdown, immediately move the throttle back to idle. 
Lower the nose immediately after touchdown, the thrust reverser will activate when the nose will touches the ground. Once engaged, you can increase throttle for a shorter landing distance, but do not engage afterburner, as it may damage the reverser. If the red light, reverser transonic, illuminates, reduce throttle immediately, to avoid a compressor stall by the engine ingesting its own exhaust gases. Steer with the rudder and apply will brakes evenly. Not a normal procedure, but on this mission bring the aircraft to a complete halt, while still on the runway. At that point, we will present you with a landing distance report. After you get the report, increase throttle and exit the runway at the first available exit, to the left. Press spacebar to unpause the mission, so that you can proceed with the final approach and landing. After you get the report, increase throttle and exit the runway at the first available exit, to the left. This is Taxiway Delta, proceed forward, towards the ramp. Perform the following steps after leaving the runway. Master Mode Selector, set to position BER. If the Master Mode Selector is not set to mode BER, the pilot will be reminded to do so by the lit altitude warning light. Taxi and Landing Lights, set to Taxi, at its full back position. This completes the after landing procedure. Press spacebar if you want to practice the shutdown of your aircraft, or press backspace if you prefer to end the mission now. You have selected to practice the Vigan shutdown. Taxi towards one of the parking spots, marked green on the figure, and stop the aircraft there. Ejection seat. Set to safe by clicking the ejection handle over your head. Press the master caution reset to acknowledge the seat unarmed alarm. Auto throttle lever, AFK. Confirm it is set to off on its upper position. Press spacebar to continue. Generator, set to off, Fran. Press the master caution reset again to cancel the alarm. 
throttle. Move back, to cut off position, after having the throttle at least one minute at ground idle position. On DCS this is done by clicking on the highlighted throttle catch on front left of lever. This will also close the high pressure fuel valve. Press the master caution reset again, to cancel the alarm. Avionics. Set all to off. Radar warning receiver, set to off, Fran. External lights. Set all external lights to their Fran position, off. Anti-collision lights. Position lights. Navigation lights, turn off by placing their switch on its center position. Landing and taxi lights. Turn off, by placing their switch on its center position. Radar altimeter, RHM, set to off, Fran. Identification friend foe, IFF, confirm it is set to off. Press spacebar to continue. Oxygen. Turn off by clicking its lever, its red side, Fran, should become visible. Press the master caution reset again, to cancel the alarm. Low pressure fuel valve, LT cron. Set to off, Fran, its nearby red light should illuminate. Generator. Set to on, till, at least 10 seconds after cutting off the throttle. Canopy. Open by moving its lever aft, with two right clicks. Main electric power. Set to off, Fran, at least 5 seconds after closing the low pressure fuel valve, to allow enough time for it to close, as it is electrically operated. Data cartridge. Remove, by clicking on it. This completes the shutdown procedure, press spacebar to finish the training. Excellent. You have successfully completed this Vigan training mission on landing and shutdown. Press spacebar to exit from the mission.